RTF 331R, Fall 2006. Sandy Stones teaches postmodern Gothic to 37 students. Within two weeks, eight students drop the class. No one misses them, and no one will remember their names. The roster is set. For the next few weeks, students will continue to come to class on a regular basis. Occasional absences are expected and forgiven for appointments, film shoots, hangovers, you name it. People have every excuse in the book for not showing up. October 27th, project number one is due for the class. Students present a variety of projects. The last project of the day, I Am Cyborg. A short film made by my roommate, Mark, airs for the class. 3.45 p.m., class lets out on time. Mark tells Sandy won't be able to make it next time because of a press screening for the John Cameron Mitchell film, Short Bus. As I'm leaving, I see Mark taking the stairs, presumably going home. This is the last time I see Mark almost two months ago. One private investigator who's been on the case from the very beginning believes the official ruling is wrong. We searched the entire interior of the house, the, the basement, the living room, the upstairs, the attic. We looked all through the house. His friend, when we went in the house, made a comment that he'd never seen the house as clean before. Apparently it's, it's never been that straightened up. Um, we didn't see any indication that he had been at the house. This is where Mark slept. Uh, his bed is normally always like this, and he hasn't. It's been this exact position since that day he he's been gone. Uh, this was his to-do list. He really used to write everything on note cards instead of getting a calendar, and nothing's been crossed off in months. Mark's MySpace and Facebook pages haven't changed in months. It's still the same douchebag picture he made me take two months ago. Sure. Come on. You look fucking retarded. I'm a tiger. Arr, yeah. I can't believe it. No, dude, this is stupid. What the fuck are we doing? Mark, you're an idiot. I feel sexy. Possible theories to Mark's whereabouts. Number one, drug rehab. Yeah, that's right. Mark had a drug problem. Can we do it again? Do it again. Alright, do it again. Ah! Burr. It's really an issue of tolerance. How much is this person used to? If a person has um, gradually over uh, months or years increased the dose, um, a person could function. This photograph was taken on March 4th, 1994. He had overdosed on sedatives and alcohol and nearly died. I know that he had a drug problem, but I don't think that it was anything like that serious. Like there's really nothing in his life right now that would really like warrant any drug use. So he's, I know he's definitely not in rehab. Theory number two. The overwhelming popularity of music television leads to Mark's untimely demise, as he believes he's the star of every music video, locking himself in the club with a video iPod. Private investigator Tom Grant is convinced that the truth has yet to be revealed. I believe there was someone with him in that room. I believe it was someone that he knew. Our detectives actually went into this investigation on the premise that this was a suicide. That's the way they conducted this investigation. So that there was a very thorough, comprehensive investigation done from the very beginning. And everything that the detectives encountered indicated to them that this was a homicide. We actually uh, found nothing to indicate that this was anything but a homicide. <laughs> At 8.50 a.m., I'm late for my 9 o'clock ingester. The project for postmodern gothic that's due that day is even something I'm too embarrassed to turn in. As I walk outside, I see a DVD labeled Project Number 2 and a script for Project Number 3. Knowing I'd make a shitty grade, Marcus put both our names on the project. The film was decent, it gets a few laughs, and even though I have no idea how Mark pulled it off, I gladly will take credit for part of it, and the class will be none the wiser. It doesn't have to make sense, it's postmodern. 
Mark has written a script for the third film project. It explains why he's been absent. The only problem, the third act, the resolution, has no explanation for the disappearance of Mark Dennis. So I begin filming what Mark refers to as the most appropriate postmodern gothic project he or I could ever make. I realize the whole situation reminds me of that Nick Cage flick adaptation. And for some reason, I spend the next 10 minutes after my first editing session making Nicholas Cage faces in front of the mirror. Why should I be made to feel I have to apologize for my existence? And when I see him doing that pathetic opening monologue, I realize how much I miss Mark. And now those questions remain unanswered. Despite the controversy, police are confident they made the correct ruling. They consider the case closed. Tom Grant does not. He believes the investigation should be reopened and the inconsistencies resolved once and for all. If you have any information, please call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353.